Dud, The Bear Who Is A Little Less Than Perfect by Kay Cooper. No one really knows how Dud became what he was. Some say that the machine he was stitched on was not working quite right the day he was made. Still others say that it was the way he was stored when he was finished. However it happened, Dud was in fact a little less than perfect. Dud had originally been made from a pattern for a bear called Dudley. He was cut out just fine. However, when the person in charge of checking quality took a closer look at him, he decided he was not worth spending any more time on. So Dud was placed on a large shelf far away from all the properly finished Dudley bears that were ready to go into shops and be sold. Dud stayed on that shelf for what seemed like years, being pushed further and further back to where he was not seen. It was dark, it was cold, very dirty, and poor Dud was so very sad. One day, Davina, a Kalina at the factory, spotted one of Dud's feet just sticking out on the shelf. What are you doing all the way back there, she said, as she scooped him out with a broom. Poor little bear, said Davina, as she looked at him. Don't know about being a Dudley bear, more like a dud. She decided that she would ask if she could take him home to the neighbor's children. Sure, said the factory owner, no one here wants him. So Davina took Dud to her neighbors. When the children saw him, they, were, they said a polite thank you and took Dud. However, they really did not like the look of him. Winter, the eldest of the children said, his neck is too wobbly and just look how fat he is. Hunter, her younger brother, said, He looks really sad and his ears are crooked. His fur is so rough, exclaimed Winter, he would be far too scratchy to give to baby Thomas. The children kept Dud for quite a while. They played games with him outside. Sometimes he was one of the goalposts for their football games. At other times, he was used as a, baseball, a base for softball. Often he was left outside for days at a time with only Wesley, the family's dog, for company. Although he was a lovely dog, it was really not the same as being hugged by a person. Sometimes snails and other small creatures would nibble on Dud. He had to be stitched up here and there, and as time went on, he got even more, well, let's say even more, a little less than perfect. One day, Winter and Hunter's parents decided it was time for a really good spring clean of their bedrooms. With large garbage bags in hand and the children's help, they cleaned up each room. Many of the toys were placed in the bag as the children had outgrown them. We'll take these to the local charity, the parents said. They were just about finished when Winter said, what about this old thing? She picked up Dud by his arm. Do we keep him? They all gave Dud a good look and finally agreed that he should go. So into the big garbage bag he went to be whisked off to the local charity shop with the other unwanted toys. Dud sat in the garbage bag at the charity shop for a few days before the bag was eventually opened to be sorted by one of the volunteers. Oh dear, she said, no one's ever going to want you. Too dirty, too odd and too sad. She was just about to put Dud in the bin when another of the volunteers said, wait, um, there's a hospital and orphanage around the corner. I bet they would take him. And um, I have a couple of others to take there as well. We would be happy to take care of these guys for you, said Dr. Cooper, the teddy bear doctor. All unwanted bears are welcome here, she said, as she took the group that included Dud. Dr. Cooper looked at the bears and Dud was placed with them on yet another shelf. Often people would come in and fall in love with one of the unwanted bears and they got a second chance to be loved. Poor Dud, however, sat sadly for ages. Nobody ever picked him up, cuddled or even considered taking him home. One day the hospital was visited by a group of elderly people on an outing. I've never owned a bear, commented one lady called Lorraine, as she looked quietly around the room. I was an orphan myself, you see, and we never got any toys at all. Everyone in the group was amazed as they had all had a teddy bear at one time or another and thought how sad it was that Lorraine had never owned one. Just as everybody was about to get back on the bus, Lorraine noticed a bear alone on a shelf. Oh, he's lovely, she exclaimed as she picked him up and uh, picked up Dud and began to hug him. He's beautiful, she said. I love him. Well, said Dr. Cooper, 
more than a bit surprised that she did not seem too bothered by his imperfections or scars and stitches. He must be meant to belong to you. You take him and give him a good home. Lorraine was delighted. She hugged Dud closely and her eyes filled with tears. I will love him forever, she whispered, and he will always be kept safe on my bed. As Lorraine headed back to the bus, all the other people in the group smiled to see her so happy. I'll make him a jumper, said one lady. Yet another said, I'll make him some pyjamas. It was not long before everyone on the bus was coming up with ideas for things to make for Dud. So as it happened, Dud now had a whole group of friends and a very loving forever home. He was also beginning to realise that finally he had a new start with someone who could see how truly valuable he was, just the way he was.